Uh, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining for today's webinar for the Global Network Project towards study and work in Japan. And audience for today's webinar is joined from India, Sri Lanka, Bhutan, Nepal, Bangladesh, and Pakistan. Uh, panelists, so we have an audience basically from Asia and Pacific and Southwest Asia. Uh, my name is Dheera Joshi. I'm a master's student in the Department of Civil Engineering at the University of Tokyo. This is the rescheduled session three out of the 12 webinar sessions hosted by the University of Tokyo India office. Due to some technical issues, we could not host the uh, seminar same on uh, November 21. And we sincerely apologize for the inconvenience caused to the participants. Today, we are presenting a study and work in Japan presented by Mr. Yasuyuki Miyauchi, Director of the University of Tokyo India office, Dr. H. Sato, Professor of the Graduate School of Frontier Sciences in the University of Tokyo, Mr. Masumoto, Manager for the New University Establishment Preparatory Office at the uh, AK University of Hiroshima, and further Mr. Hori, Inbound Coordinator in the International Affairs Office of Toyo University. I will be joined in this facilitation by Ms. Rubina, who is also a graduate student at the University of Tokyo. Our webinar is scheduled for two hours. Just a little housekeeping before we get started. If you have any question during the presentation, please type them into the question box of your uh, Zoom control panel, and we will try to answer them during the presentation. So a little brief about the University of Tokyo, which is among the top echelons of the select global universities with alumni including 17 prime ministers, 16 Nobel laureates, field medalists, and three astronauts, with focus on international programs for bright undergraduate and graduate students across the globe. AK University of Hiroshima has excellent problem-based learning, incorporated curriculum, challenging the real-world problems with various possibilities for study abroad and internships. Toyo University has a history of more than 130 years and more than 333,000 graduates speak volume about the basis of the spirit of this university, which is fostering individuals appreciating diversity and valuing their own philosophy. So I must tell you that universities in Japan are almost of the same standard in education to provide quality education through opportunities for research publication to the students and buzzing with enormous energy having so many club activities like skiing, manga club, karate club, and many others to bring out the best in the personality of an individual. I again request that if you have any question during the presentation, then please put them in the Q&A portal of the Zoom. And uh, as I have already disabled the chat box, now without further delay, I will turn to Mr. Uh, Professor uh, Miyoji Sensei to start the proceedings as the motivator and guide to study uh, and work in Japan for the students and their guardians. Mr. Miyochi, I will Thank just stop this here. Yeah. Thank you. Dear students, her parents in seven countries, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka, and Maldives. My name is Yasuki Miyauchi, the director of University of Tokyo. This seminar, studying her work in Japan, is scheduled on November 21st. Due to technical reason, it was postponed today. Therefore, I'd like to apologize at first. Very sorry for inconvenience for you. Anyhow, this program is sponsored by Ministry of Education, Culture, Sports, Science, and technology in Japan. The mission is to introduce you nearly 30 major universities in Japan and assist you to study and work in Japan. This uh, project, this project consists of 12 sessions. It is started from October uh, 31st until February next year. We plan to uh, introduce nearly 30 major universities in Japan, various places, Tokyo, Hiroshima, southern part of Japan, private, public, and national universities, both graduate 
and undergraduate school. Therefore, if you participate in many sessions, you'll be familiar with major Japanese universities today. Of course, 20 minutes presentation is not enough for you, I think. Therefore, if you have interest, please contact directly to the university. You can get good answer from them, I'm sure. I think this program will help you. And uh, this should be the first career uh, statement in point in Japan, I think. And it is my great pleasure. You consider some Japanese universities as your future option. Anyhow, please enjoy the session. Thank you. Uh, thank, you thank you very much. Thank you. I will just start the sharing the screen again. Where are we currently? So we have finished the talk by Miyoshi Sensei. Now um, I will now invite for a very special and informative talk by Ms. Megumi Paul. Uh, she is the managing director of the Focal Ed, who herself is a gold medalist from NGR University and based in Tokyo. And I assure her talks will be very fruitful for young students to make them comfortable and lead them towards making a wise decision, which is a very crucial point in their academic life. Ms. Megumi, I will just stop sharing the screen. Thank you, Mr. Deeraj. Hello, everyone. This is Megumi Paul. I was born in India, moved to Japan in 1997, and became a Japanese citizen. Thanks for joining today's webinar. It gives me great pleasure to present to you all today. I will share my screen now. Yes, it is visible. Can you make it uh, full screen, Ms. Magumi, yeah, yeah, please? I'll do that. Thank you. I will briefly explain why Japan is the rising magnet for foreign talent for higher education and work. The national flag of Japan is officially named as Nishoki, meaning sun mark flag. Main religions are Shintoism, Buddhism and Christianity. Japan has 47 prefectures equivalent to states in India. Japan has the second largest population of 125 million among G7 industrialized nation next to United States of America. As you know, G7 countries are Japan, US, Germany, UK, France, Italy, and Canada. Japan's economy is the third largest in the world and is on the move again, brimming with opportunities for foreign professionals to work hand in hand with top Japanese talent. Japan's economy is mainly driven by automotive, consumer electronic industries, robotics, and animation industries. Japan provides a comfortable living environment for students. Firstly, Japan is a safe place to live with low crime rate. It has an excellent public transportation system with subways and bullet trains. I have to mention about the well-established national health insurance system. 70% of the medical bill is paid by the government and only 30% of the medical expenses is paid by the student. After the student joins the college, the student will be given the national health insurance card. The student has to pay an annual premium of rupees 12,000 only, which is reasonable. To your right, you see Tokyo ranked first in World Safer Cities ranking in 2019 by Economist Intelligence Unit. There are 90 undergraduate English courses offered by 40 Japanese universities. 
and 160 postgraduate courses offered by 51 Japanese universities. All undergraduate degree programs are for four years and graduate degree programs are for one to two years and three-year PhD program. There are three different categories of universities in Japan, national, public, and private. National universities was founded by Japanese government and contributes to the development of higher education and research. Public universities are established by prefectures and play an important role in providing higher education. 80% of the universities are private and provides unique education and research based on the spiritual legacy of the founders. I will share the differences between Japanese and Indian higher education. The Indian education is focused on theoretical studies, whereas Japanese education focus on the basic knowledge of a specific field of major. Japanese education provides an opportunity to understand various diverse foreign cultures, society and nature, whereas Indian education focuses on growing global trends. Also, Japanese education gives importance to develop communication skills, logical thinking, problem solving, and apply these skills to solve new issues. Japanese universities offer world-class facilities with cutting edge technology, ideal for educational research and international activities. They provide sophisticated libraries with excellent workspace for self-study, group discussions, co-curricular activities, for teamwork. Dormitories provide students a peaceful atmosphere for a well-balanced academic and personal lifestyle. Here we will compare the tuition fees and living expenses of US and Japan and about scholarships. Tuition fees in Japanese public universities is rupees 4 lakhs per year versus rupees 22 lakhs in US public universities. Tuition fees in Japanese private universities is rupees 12 lakhs per year versus rupees 37 lakhs per year in US private universities. Japanese college tuition fees is one third of US college tuition fees. Living expenses in Japan and US is almost the same. Japanese universities offer merit-based and need-based scholarships. Unlike USA, no visa issues in Japan for both student visa and for employment visa after graduation in Japan. Average salary for undergraduate students after graduation is around rupees 28 lakhs per year. Japan has the lowest unemployment rate of 2.34% based on 2020 statistics and likely to continue due to growing population, which provides a great opportunity for international students like you to study, work and settle in Japan. Why we have so many job opportunities in Japan? Japan is the third largest economy in the world and the only developed nation in Asia with highest per capita income. It has the lowest unemployment rate of 2.5% in the developed G7 countries. There are a number of global Japanese companies like Toyota, Panasonic, Mitsubishi that are leading the change. Uniqlo has opened its outlet in India, showing that Japan is moving to retailing industry also. All global companies like Google, Microsoft, Amazon have big operations in Japan due to Japan market size. After graduation, you will get a placement in Japan in Japanese companies as well as multinational companies like Apple, Accenture, Deloitte, Google. Also, you can work in India or any part of the world in Japanese companies as they welcome students who have graduated from Japanese universities. Japan's culture is incredibly rich. The food is insanely delicious with various international cuisine options like Indian, Mexican, Italian, French. Everyone is so polite. Transportation is always on time. Japan is a place where ancient temples and world heritage sites coexist with modern cityscapes and state-of-the-art technology. There are four seasons to experience and enjoy in Japan. The average temperature in Tokyo during winter is 10 degrees Celsius, spring 23 degrees, summer 30 degrees, and autumn 22 degrees Celsius. Thank you.
So with that, I will pass on to Mr. Dheeraj to start introducing the distinguished speakers from the prestigious Japanese universities to proceed with their presentations. Yes, thank you, Ms. Magumi. I request you to please uh, stop sharing. Ah, thank you very much. I will just uh, share the again agenda for today. So here are we, we have finished the two speakers. Uh, thank you, Ms. Megumi for giving such a crucial piece of information, which I think it, it is not easily available to the students. And I think it is very crucial for making an informed decision before coming to Japan, especially the point that you made regarding the fees structure and the job opportunities. Not only the job opportunities, there are part-time job opportunities also available for the students here. And now I would like to go to Mr. Uh, Dr. Sato, professor of the Graduate uh, School of Frontier Sciences, who is a distinguished alumnus of the University of Tokyo. And his research is focuses on novel technologies for solving problems in the developing countries towards sustainable development. Uh, professor Sato, I will just stop sharing the screen. You can then share, please. Uh, good, uh, good evening. Um, um, this is Sato. Uh, light is not very good. Okay. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, Mr. Diraj for introducing me. And I belong to yeah. Uh, the University of Tokyo has many many schools, and uh, not only schools for undergraduate students, but also for yeah uh, graduate level education. We have many. Uh, graduate schools. And uh, today, uh, I'd like to introduce you my graduate school, Graduate School of Frontier Sciences. And please allow me to uh, share my screen with you. Uh, yes, you can share. Yes. And uh, can you see my screen? Yes, it is visible, Professor Sato. Yes, thank you very much. It is clear. Thank you. Yeah, graduate school of frontier sciences maybe there are and um, how to say uh high school students and in that case um, you have to spend some time in the and uh, in a uh, university to consider my school uh, because this uh, graduate school it's graduate school so you can come here only after uh you get a bachelor degree and um yeah, graduate school of frontier sciences. So specialization is not very clear uh, from this name. And uh, but uh, first of all, yeah, um, I'd like to explain about the Kashiwa campus. Uh, University of Tokyo has three campuses. One is Komaba. Komaba campus is mainly for uh, first year and second year students, and then uh, Hongo campus, uh, which is uh, main, uh, uh, which is mainly for third year, fourth year, and graduate level students. And um, in Komaba, in Komaba campus, uh, they uh, say uh, general arts is located, general arts subjects. In uh, Hongo campus. Uh, specialized subjects like the engineering, natural science, social science, agriculture, medics, uh, those schools are located in uh, Hongo campus. And uh, yeah, Hongo campus and Komaba campus have very long history. Uh, but the Kashiwa campus is the third campus of the whole uh, the University of Tokyo. Kashiwa campus is located in the suburban area of Tokyo, uh, about 50, 40, 50 kilometers away from the center of Tokyo. And uh, this campus is specialized, or not specialized, or rather intended to promote fusion of different disciplines. Yeah, the yeah, specialized, there are yeah, specialized. Uh, our research field is, in a sense, very good, but uh, when we consider uh, problems in real society, like the environmental global warming issues, then uh, we have to consider not only technologies, but also social and um, 
yeah, natural science, different uh, research fields are needed. And uh, this campus is intended so that uh, those different the researchers with those different research fields, backgrounds can interact. And as you can see here, yeah, we have good research facilities. It's away from Tokyo where the land price is so expensive. Here we have lots of land and we can install many, many good uh, facilities. And uh, yeah, lodging, lodging condition is also better than the center of Tokyo. And uh, we have good support system for, for um, yeah, support system for the international and the local students. And yeah, we have the good connection with the city. This campus is located in Kashiwa city and the municipality, we have good uh, relationship with the Kashiwa city municipality. And um, yeah, it's intended to have very international uh, activities. And uh, this photo uh, shows the uh, general impression of our campus. It's, as you see, it's modern, but we have lo also lots of green. And established in 1998, so about 20 years after our foundation. And uh, we have uh, three divisions undergraduate school of frontier sciences. The first one, the first one is a transdisciplinary uh, uh, sciences. Uh, one, first one is transdisciplinary sciences and second one bioscience. And third one environmental studies. I think you can more easily imagine what is bioscience. Yeah, so we have integrated bioscience and uh, we have con uh, computational biology and the bioinformatics and uh, re uh, medical science. Uh, transdisciplinary sciences. Uh, we ha uh, this is in short uh, physics. Yeah, this is bioscience, it's biology, and the transdisciplinary science is. Uh, closer to physics, advanced material science, advanced energy, and the complexity of science and engineering. And uh, the third division, environmental studies, uh, natural environmental studies. I think you can easily guess what this, yeah, this six for. Ocean technology, policy, and environment. Yeah, ocean yeah, technology is important. Uh, say like the extracting the oil from the uh, bottom of, mar of the ocean and the policy also important. And yeah, we have to compromise. We, we also have to consider effect on environment. Envi and the third one, environmental systems. Um, so the industries, for example, and the in industries, they have to consider how to deal, handle the uh, waste. In industrial wastes. And uh, also we have to consider the distribution systems of products. Um, yeah, we, yeah, the, this environmental system is going to cover quite a wide range of aspects. And this one, fourth one, human and engineered environmental studies. This is environment indeed. However, it's a bit different from what we consider from environment we what we consider as environment. For example, um, if yeah, for disabled person, uh, yeah, interacting with other people is difficult. But uh, if one we he or she has some gear, helping gear, assisting gear to um, help interaction like the communication or moving, uh, that would be nice. So yeah, that kind of the uh, helping system is uh, uh, discussed here. Also the like health sensing, like the blood pressure uh, using something like the Apple Watch <laughs> and uh, those kind of um, aspects are studied in this field. And the fifth one, socio-cultural environmental studies. Actually this one I belong to and 
uh, this is to uh, discuss about uh, um, where people live, like city or rural area, and how people are living there in view of the social relationships and uh, uh, architecture or the community structure and urban structure. And I am in charge of wastewater issue. Sixth one, international studies. For example, uh, uh, some rivers like the Ganges River, uh, it's an in, uh, international river. And of course, uh, you know, regarding the environmental issues of such river, uh, so international relationship should be considered. And also we discuss about the international development or development of the developing countries. And seventh one is sustainability science. Uh, yeah, sustainability is so important and we have to hope, yeah, work on this uh, subject, subject to a big, yeah, big topic um, from different point of views. We have these three divisions. And um, yeah, 12 departments, and uh, we have this much uh, faculty members, 40 administrative staffs, and uh, the number of students is this much. So uh, master students, a little bit less than 1,000, doctor students, about over 500. And in this uh, 1,500 students, we have about 500 international students. One third is international. And um, yeah, this shows the uh, yeah, uh, yearly change of the uh, number of international students. So yeah, now the number of international stu students is increasing like this. And uh, yeah, percentage is also increasing. And this shows the breakdown of the uh, their home countries. So, Asia region, Asia region occupies yeah almost eighty seven percent. And actually, yeah, Chinese, we have many Chinese students, and um, followed by Korea, Philippines, and so on. And the uh, uh, we also have, yeah, we have students from different places, Europe, Central, uh, South America, North America, uh, Oceania, Africa, Middle East. Uh, and uh, we have some uh, international um, exchange programs. So the Department of Environmental Systems and the Ocean Technology Policy and Environment. Yeah, these two departments have uh, uh, exchange program with Imperial College, uh, United Kingdom. And uh, Department of Social Cultural and Environmental Studies, we have the student exchange with uh, European universities, uh, which is called OSMIP. And this program, yeah, and in, with NUS, the National University of Singapore and the Tsinghua uh, Tongchi University, this, yeah, it's Singapore and the Chinese universities, AMU. And these programs are uh, uh, mainly uh, architects. Uh, sorry. And uh, Department of Human and Engineered Environmental Studies, they have, um, yeah, in exchange program with MIT in United States. And Division of Biosciences has launched a program with the University of Lyon in France. And we have every year about 40 incoming students based on these uh, programs. And maybe you are interested in scholarship program. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have so much scholarship uh, positions. And um, yeah, this one is the only scholarship program we can directly choose. 
uh, and um, yeah, it's for master course. And um, it's yeah, it covers only for the division of environmental studies and uh, yeah, application deadline is every year 10th of December. So today it's so the day after tomorrow for this year. Uh, if, if you are interested, maybe you can <laughs> immediately apply. Uh, it, this year you can apply for it online, and but the later you have to uh, send the uh, documents, application related documents, hard copy of the document by surface mail to us. And if you're interested, please visit this site or uh, later I show you how to find out this site. And uh, for application uh, materials needed uh, uh, application form and the tr academic transcript uh, for your undergraduate program, certificate of the graduation of your under undergraduate program, two confidential recommendation letters. Yeah, these are needed and so please send the, uh, collect these and send them to uh, our international liaison office. Uh, here, no online submission is accepted, it says. However, uh, this year, we know that the mail's condition is so difficult. Mailing condition this year is, is so difficult because of COVID. So yeah, we can wait for the uh, delivery of the uh, hard, hard copy. And uh, it covers tuition fee, enrollment fee, monthly stipend, which is about 150,000 yen. No, no, no. Ah, yeah, 150,000 yen. And the round air uh, trip air ticket. And uh, we have, yeah, we also provide some subsidy for research. Uh, it's quite a good program. And um, yeah, in not not only India, I think the many of the countries which were ra uh, raised by Mr. Miyauchi um, uh, included. So so please consider. And but, uh, there is one condition, serious condition. So at least two years of professional working experience after graduation is necessary. And you must be uh, not more than 35 years old. So you need to have some working experience. And um, yeah, apart from this scholarship program, of course we, yeah, you can consider applying to our school uh, via a uh, mixed scholarship, uh, which is organized by um, embassy in each country, Japanese embassy in each country. And um, from here, uh, this is a kind of uh, our promotion activity so that the uh, international students can be exposed more closely to our school. So we have this University of Tokyo summer internship program in Kashiwa or UTSIP. Kashiwa program every year. Uh, this is open for undergraduate students. Uh, started in 2013 and uh, yeah, hands on research internship, yeah, research internship. The duration is for six weeks in summer and uh, it covers significant part of uh, yeah, scholarship. So this much uh, amount of scholarship. And uh, yeah, we provide accommodation. Yeah, for it's for undergraduate students. And the timing for next year is as you see here, from June eight to June seventeen, next year. Oh, I hope that uh, you can come. Yeah, I, I if and uh, the present situation, of course, uh, for you to come to Japan is difficult. But uh, I hope that uh, yeah, this. Uh, by this time, the COVID issue is anyhow clear. And uh, first, yeah, we have yeah, six weeks program and uh, you 
uh, those who are selected for this program uh, in our house are allocated to uh, laboratory in our school and then do a small study and finally make some presentation. And yeah, there are 40 posts. So 40 students can come. And uh, fees that are covered are uh, listed here. For more details, please visit our site. And again, <laughs> later I show the site. Uh, yeah, this, these photos show uh, the activities. Yeah, this many students came. And um, or, yeah, this is orientation. Yeah, no. Uh, not all of these because, yeah, but uh, they went to Kabuki play uh, together and enjoyed. And uh, yeah, you can also learn Japanese and also field trip. And uh, yeah, finally, you have to make presentation. This is a photo for the last presentation day. So yeah, please, please consider to come to our school. And uh, yeah, I should show you our how to visit. Yeah, how to find out those information. And um, yeah, GSFS University of Tokyo, and then you can find out our the top page of our school. And uh, from here. Uh, at the top, you can find some menus. And you can find information for international students. And you can find here uh, International Liaison Office. Yeah, please visit this International Liaison Office. Or maybe you can uh, enter here um, uh, uh, yeah, uh, UTCIP program or uh, uh, ADB program, ADB scholarship. And um, are they? international liaison office. And you will come here and uh, here, perspective, a uh, prospective international student. So here you can find uh, some inf useful information. Uh, scholarship is here. And I think you the SIP information how to find. I think you the SIP. And yeah, summer internship program is found here. And from yeah, regarding scholarship, choose scholarship. And there are different uh, scholarships uh, explained here. But uh, maybe you can also. But uh, I think the most suitable one for you should be the one provided by ADV, ADB. Where is it? To scholarships after post enrollment. Next. To. I cannot. This is for AFDB. Okay, maybe here I should enter ADB. And ADB, yeah, the page for ADB is now found. And from here you can find more details. Okay, uh, that's it from me. So thank you very much for your find it attention and I think you have questions so and I, I can answer to your question. Uh, thank you Sado Sensei for such a comprehensive and detailed presentation regarding GSFS Kashiwa campus and I would like to uh, tell the audiences that I have also taken some classes in Kashiwa campus though I belong to Komaba campus I have taken some classes in Kashiwa campus and it is an excellent campus and I must tell you that there are other campuses in University of Tokyo, including Kashiwa, Hongo, Komaba, Shiro Kanadai, and other campuses. Yes. And they are having excellent opportunities for students who wants to pursue undergraduate, graduate, PhD, postdoc programs. And I have shared some links in the chat box. You can check there. And uh, I will just uh, uh, 
start the Q&A session, uh, Professor Sato, if you kindly allow. I will just post some questions to you. You can answer them. Yes. Uh, uh, some of the questions we have already answered. Uh, there are some questions as this is a session regarding study and work in Japan. So most of the questions are regarding the work environment in Japan. Mm -hmm. So they are asking uh, which exam is more important, GLPT for searching jobs in IT sector? Mm -hmm. Is GLPT important? Um, G G GLP? JLPT, Japanese G Language Proficiency Test. Ah for uh, jobs in it sector i think yeah if you seriously want to work <laughs> in japan uh japanese language is really necessary i have to say i should say yes uh, thank you Kurva. Yeah. Uh, i think this answers your query uh, there is a question regarding uh, phd programs related to artificial intelligence and machine learning uh -huh. from mr susmith mm -hmm. PhD programs in artificial intelligence and machine learning. Uh huh. Uh, yeah, the artificial intelligence and machine learning is now a kind of commodity tool in many, many uh, different research fields. So I think maybe, or if you are interested in developing new algorithm for machine learning, or artificial intelligence. In that case, uh, how to say, uh, research or the school, you should choose maybe a bit narrow down. I think the, uh, in Hongo campus, there is a Jouhou Gakkan. I, I, uh, uh, I, I do not know how to call its name in English. Uh, there in Hongo, but uh, there is Jouhou uh, Gakkan. Sorry, uh, uh, what is the name of this? I know. Uh, I have name. shared the link of the University of Tokyo with the students in the chat box, and they can uh, check and thoroughly scrutinize that regarding the departments that are there. Mm -hmm. Yes, Sensei. Yes, thank you. And uh, there is a question regarding is it necessary to gain two year work experience before applying to Kashiwa campus? Uh, as for just applying to Kashiwa campus, no need. But if mm. you want to apply with scholarship, apply to uh, ADB scholarship, then a uh, two-year uh, working experience is necessary. OK. Thank you, Professor Sato. I have some more questions. Yes. Are there postgraduate programs in microbiology available? Uh, in my school, in life sciences, there is. And also in um, um, uh, natural environmental studies, uh, they have the oceanology group, and uh, then they there is a professor on uh, microbiology in marine environment. And actually, I myself am working on microbiology in wastewater yes. treatment. Yes. Thank you. Uh, I think this answers your question, Rajiv. Okay. Uh, there is a question regarding uh, what is the scope of having bachelor's degree in Japanese language alone? Can I pursue bachelor's degree in Japanese university without having GLPT? Uh, pardon me? I think uh, they are asking about some arts related courses. Mm -hmm. Arts. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, pertains to mostly in uh, Komaba campus. Graduate School of Arts and Sciences. Yeah. Mm. Uh, in, so, uh, Ms. Gargi, I suggest you to look at the uh, campus of Komaba. There is a Graduate School of Arts and Sciences which deals with such kind of courses. I will share the link in the chat box uh, further with you later on. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a question regarding what is the eligibility to study masters in mechanical engineering? Mechanical engineering or eligibility? Uh, in Hongo campus, uh, there is mechanical engineering, the Department of Mechanical Engineering group. And, uh, but how to study, how to prepare for the entrance examination? I think that's what you are asking, but uh, mm. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> please, please explore. 
uh, Mr. Lokesh, I have shared some links in the chat box and uh, you can further, I have also shared very crucial information of Utopia India office email and Ms. Megumi Paul. Uh, you can contact her also if you need any uh, specific guidance. They are very highly experts in the field and you can also contact the schools directly, Mechanical Engineering Department at Utokyo. They will be very keen to guide you further. Uh, there is a question from Mr. Sahil regarding, are there postgraduate programs in agriculture, sir? I think, yeah, of course, in agriculture, but uh, uh, in my, yeah, in GSFS, there are some professors from agriculture, but uh, uh, agriculture can cover so wide range of the subjects. And uh, the professors uh, in, in, in GSFS, the professors, from agriculture, uh, mostly in uh, Department of International Studies. Uh, yeah, so okay. agriculture and uh, development in the development. Uh, so there is a similar question from uh, uh, Ms. Vaishnavi regarding courses related to pharmaceutical sector in the Todai. Uh, University of Tokyo, I will tell the participant, it is also called Todai. Uh, pharmaceutical sector in University of Tokyo, Todai. There is a pharmaceutical sector and the medic medics in uh, our yeah in the University of Tokyo, and okay. you can find out uh, the related schools uh, from the whole university. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just one last question, sir. Uh, there is a question regarding. Uh, I think. Uh, uh, Mr. Munjal is having some question regarding aeronautics or astrophysics sector. Are there job opportunities for international students in these fields? Mm, it depends, <laughs> I think. I think it's a kind of very hot uh, yeah, topic, topic or research field. And mm. uh, there may, yeah, there should be. Uh, however, <laughs> Yeah, entrance would be also tough. <laughs> That's yes. what I guess. <laughs> uh, there are opportunities actually students uh, for uh, the students who have uh, graduated out uh, from the Japanese universities. And I uh, really advise you to uh, follow the presentation given by Ms. Nagumi. It has excellent uh, figures and statistics regarding the overall employment opportunities that are there available in Japan. Uh, there is an interesting question from Mr. Atharva regarding courses related to industrial engineering. Are there courses available regarding industrial engineering, sir? Uh, industrial engineering, uh, but uh, it's also wide, quite wide. So, mm. uh, say like the chemical processes, then chemical engineering in Hongo campus, uh, undergraduate school of engineering, and uh, um, industrial, yeah, and robotics, yeah, robotics of the auto or automation of the distribution systems. Um, that all to some extent under, yeah, uh, engine the mechanical engineering, but also the whole design can be done by information technology. And uh, in GSFS, there are some professors who are working on those aspects also in, I think, the uh, Department of Human uh, Environment and uh, also in environmental systems. I think that, yeah, looking for the research field is also, of course, important, but uh, you should look also for professors. <laughs> Who are doing what you hold the subjects which you are interested in? That's my advice. Yes, and I think most of the questions are related to other similar uh, that can be uh, uh, answered by visiting the website of the university. So I would like to conclude the session with the University of Tokyo. Thank you, Sato Sensei, yes, so thank for you very uh, much. enlightening the students and the guardians. And uh, I have shared some links on the chat box uh, with the students and guardians. They can contact them. And I have also shared the email of Sato Sensei also. You can contact Sato Sensei also later on. Yes. So I will just share the screen. Where are we? 
Uh, you can stop sharing the screen, Sado Sanji. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for you. listening. So I will just uh, show where are we. So we have finished the presentation by the University of Tokyo. Uh, and uh, now next we are having the presentation by Eki University of Hiroshima, Mr. Masus Masumoto, who is the manager with the un new university establishment preparatory office of the Eki University of Hiroshima. Our presenter today has vast experience with JICA for a long time. And now he is sharing his experiences with his students by serving in the AK University of Hiroshima. I will just stop sharing the screen, uh, Masumoto-san. Uh, you can present them. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Diraj, for introducing me. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone um, from uh, seven countries. Well, thank you very much for joining this occasion today. Uh, it is a pleasure to vir virtually introduce you our new university, AK University of Hiroshima, which is uh, just being granted an approval for establishment by the Minister of Education in Japan. We will officially inaugurate this brand new university in Hiroshima in uh, April, 2021. Okay, let me uh, start my presentation with uh, the slides. Uh, yes, the presentation is visible, Mr. Masumoto. Uh, you can please right. make it full screen. Sure. Now, can you see the full screen of my presentation? Uh, it is not uh, visible. It is still not full screen. Okay. Oh, uh, yes. It's up yes, now. it is now visible. Thank you. Okay, right. Well, um, I'd like to uh, start my presentation with a short movie. Please watch for uh, about 30 seconds. Uh, video is muted. Okay, everyone, uh, before I uh, restart my presentation in English, I'd like to introduce myself in Sinhalese because uh, I am really fluent in Sinhalese from my uh, six and a half uh, experience in Sri Lanka. Well, I born Lamai Lata Mage Katakarneka Ehenawada. Ogolo dal kama kawada, but a singer basha, Hundata Katakana Purang Hinda, me 
ඕගොල්ලන්ට ජපානයට එනවා නම් අපේ විශ්වවිද්‍යාලයට එනවා නම් කිසි මේ බය වෙන්න දෙයක් නැන් නැහැ මේක මතක තියාගන්න ඔකේ excuse my greeting in singhalese everyone uh, because uh, i was simply so pleased to be able to speak in singhalese after a while well anyway uh, let me get back to english language for continuing my presentation my name is ryohei matsumoto from ak university of hiroshima and uh, i will continue my presentation and move to the next slide well uh, ak university will be established as the newest public university by the prefectural government of hiroshima the university is established in order to nurture young people like you who will be our future leaders locally and globally and who are able to respond to challenges that are not existing in the present world we will be a small liberal arts college with 100 students per year including 20 international students we will have all classes in small classroom setting using active learning methods as the very first batch of our students we count on you to create this new university with us we will have one department and a course namely social system design so that you will have knowledge skills and competencies to design new social systems in the future you will be able to choose your major in three areas that are responding to sustainable development goals or sdgs namely identity design business design and ecosystem design you will be taking humanities related subjects in identity design social science related subjects in business design and natural science related subjects in ecosystem design ak university of hiroshima is uniquely designed to respond to the needs of unforeseeable future we will be fully bilingual institution and we welcome international students from all over the world regardless of their japanese proficiency you do not have to be fluent in japanese to be admitted to take classes for credits nor to graduate with bachelor's degree in social system design the curriculum is sdgs oriented and it is complemented with skill building courses such as ict and design thinking the curriculum of ak university of hiroshima will also focus on practical and experiential learning to make you ready for the real world by the time you graduate we will require students to participate in domestic and international practical and experiential courses you will also have a series of project based learning or pbl classes which are offered in partnership with hiroshima based companies and organizations including mazda if you know uh, with those classes we will make our students having these five core competencies before graduating you shall have foresight strategic thinking skills with energetic drive you will also have global collaboration skills and abilities to improve yourselves in lifelong learning as i explained earlier our curriculum is uniquely designed as you see it is combining liberal arts subjects basic tools skill building subjects and a series of practical courses including internships pbl exercises and degree projects you will 
undertake in your senior year to complete the whole learning experiences. You may wonder what practical and experiential learning actually look like. Let's see one example. You will have to get at least two credits of domestic internship or domestic volunteering as a part of your degree requirement. These are practical courses that give you hands-on experiences to work in Japan. We partner with local in, uh, NPO, a nonprofit organization named Joka Kakesan, actively working in rural and aging town of Aki Ota of Hiroshima. It is about two hours drive from downtown Hiroshima and you'll see such a beautiful nature in the mountainous region. The town is shrinking for both aging and migration of young people to larger cities. If you are interested in rural development or sustainable social support in rural communities, you'll have an opportunity to do a two weeks or more of internship with this organization. You may discuss with the stakeholders for identifying key tasks for you to complete and set personal goals to be accomplished within the period of internship. For example, like the one on the slide, you may undertake a mini project to create a virtual tour to attract inbound tourists. You will be expected to proactively look for solutions to address existing real life challenges. If you are a person who is willing to pursue challenges or being equipped with entrepreneurship entrepreneurial mind, you are most welcome to be one of founding students of AK University of Hiroshima. We offer affordable tuitions for international students, including 50% tuition reduction scholarship from Hiroshima Prefecture that makes about 2,500 US dollars per year. We have on-campus dormitory situated in the heart of Hiroshima city for our students too. If you wish to obtain Japanese government's financial support in your second year and after, our international office will provide full support to do so. At this moment, we are about to close the first selection window for autumn 2021 entry. Please take a closer look vertically in upper chart under second window. You see three phases as application period, second stage selection and notification of results as shown in the chart. This is the window that we would like you to apply for. Please remember the application period, which will be opened on 18th of January next year. Details of the, the application process, as well as further information related to the selection can be found in our student application guidelines available on our website. We will be looking forward to having your applications in January. If you have any questions related to the ad admission, feel free to contact our admission office by email. My presentation for introducing AK University of Hiroshima is reaching to an end. I would like to wrap up my presentation here as most of you may know, Hiroshima is a global iconic city with a strong message against nuclear weapons. For example, we have atomic bomb dome, which is one of the world heritage sites in Hiroshima. 
it is getting even more famous in the world that one must visit once in lifetime and pray for world peace. You will find many more places to visit other than the ones you see on this slide and be benefited to easily access to Hiroshima Shinkansen Station to go anywhere in Japan since we are located in the center of Hiroshima city. AK University of Hiroshima will propose a new model in higher education to the world and a global atmosphere with supports by prefecture government. Take part in making history and become a game changer in Hiroshima. I would finally like to play a short movie with a message from the governor of Hiroshima. Well, excuse my connection, it's very slow and uh, my short movie won't show up yet. Uh, Mr. Masumoto, are you going to play the movie or uh, are you going to wrap up the presentation? Uh, you are not audible. Yes, I understand. Uh, okay. Well, actually, uh, I have another slide left. Yeah, yes, you can. Uh, to show. Continue. However, it won't show. It won't show because of the slow connection. Uh, okay. Here we come. Here we come. Oh, okay. Uh, and is please. It... Yes. Allow me to take few more seconds because yes, sure. of our slow connection of the internet. It will come in a short while. Please hold on. Once this slide show the play button, it, it will, you know, start playing, but uh, it won't come. Uh, Mr. Masumoto, I think uh, uh, if you uh, get the video later on, if we get time, you can play it later on at the end of the session. I will give you okay, time for that. Right. For that, you can uh, play the video sure. later on than that. So I think uh, we will start the Q and A session. Sure. So thank you, Mr. Masumoto, for sharing such much. a nice presentation with the students. Uh, I will now start the Q and A session for ten minutes for fruitful discussion of his students with the panelists of AK University of Hiroshima. And uh, I request the panelists of AK University to kindly go through them and answer the questions to the satisfaction of the young minds. And I find Mr. Uh, Okamoto has been answering most of the questions. And uh, there are some questions in the uh, Q&A box you can see. I will just read them for you. Uh, what is the course uh, detail? Uh, what is the course detail for business design and uh, uh, are graduate students also eligible for this? Right. Okay. Can everyone hear my voice? Yes, you are audible. You can please answer. Right. Okay. Uh... Uh, he is basically asking regarding the course detail for business design. Right. Business okay. design. Yeah. For example, we have uh, economics, 
legal mind or uh, introduction to business administration, like public management theory, management strategy and organization theory, and marketing theory, finance, uh, social entrepreneurship, studies in social economic system, industry and business model, environmental economics, regional uh, revitalization, uh, and development economies. That's about it for uh, the business design. Okay. Uh, are there any biology undergraduate programs? Biology? Yes. Uh, we actually, um, uh, introduction to biotechnology we have, but uh, uh, bioscience we do not. Okay. So uh, I think your presentation has exhaustively covered most of the programs that are offered under the bachelor's degree. So I will skip this question. Uh, there is a question regarding microbiology availability in the university, microbiology course. Okay, I think the same similar score, course that you have already spoken about. Uh, there yes. is a question regarding environmental science or food technology courses. Uh, we have the uh, introductionally uh, subjects to uh, environmental science. However, we do not have uh, subjects related to food technology. Okay. Uh, just uh, one last question. Uh, similar question regarding master's course in environment. Environment sciences, I think. Right. Uh, actually, we only pr uh, offer bachelor's degree programs at okay. uh, our university. So I think most of the questions have been uh, regularly being answered by Mr. Okamoto, and uh, he has been very active in answering the questions. And I have shared some links of the AK University also here, and with the uh, email IDs of the AK University. And the students are requested to kindly go through them and uh, email and contact AK University staff and offices. They will be very happy and pleased to assist you in the best possible manner for any uh, help and kind of any uh, suggestions you require. They will be directly contacting you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Masumoto, for such a nice presentation and such a comprehensive discussion with the students. And I thank Mr. Okamoto-san also. And uh, I request him if he can also further answer some of the queries that are very general in nature, and he can answer it during the session of the other presentations. So I will just uh, go with the agenda again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Masumoto. For my study, Tanyavad. Ah, thank you. So we have uh, finished the presentation of AK University of Hiroshima. Uh, now I will be starting the presentation by Toyo University, uh, Mr. Hori, who is the inbound coordinator in the International Affairs Office of Toyo University, will be giving the presentation. And uh, I will be most happy uh, to answer the queries later on during the Q&A session with Mr. Hori and uh, Toyo University officials. So I will request Mr. Toyo, uh, Mr. Hori of Toyo University to start the presentation, please. All right. Okay, share the screen. Yeah, thank you very much for your introduction. Uh, thank you. Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you virtually. Uh, my name is Ryosuke Hori. Uh, I work in the inter international office at Toyo University, right? So the first thing I have to uh, emphasize today is we are Toyo, not Tokyo. See, 1K uh, makes a big difference, right? Right. Uh, Tokyo University or University of Tokyo is uh, one of the national universities uh, who is hosting uh, today's event. And we, the Toyo University, is a pri private university uh, also located in to uh, Tokyo, right? So uh, there is a big difference between these two. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, don't get confused with just one little K, right? But, um, well, if you say, Toyo in Tokyo, maybe 20 times, 30 times, uh, it will stay, our university name will stay in your head as a long-term memory. So I want you to do that, right? So anyway, 
Uh, let me start my presentation by sharing my screen here. Um, is everything okay? Uh, yes, it is full screen and uh, fully visible, Mr. Okay. Hoy, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So uh, again, uh, we are Toyo University. Uh, we are a private university located in Tokyo, right? And in this presentation, well, I, I want to generally introduce our university first. And I will talk about, you know, what kind of programs we have, uh, what kind of majors you can, you know, specialize in. And also I will talk about, um, you know, campuses, environments, and also, you know, financial aid scholarship and admissions information, right? So uh, it will be a just general introduction of the university. So, um, just to make sure, um, if you have any questions or if you want further information, well, the the first thing you should do is to visit our website, right? You know, just, just that's a basic thing. And then, uh, if you have further questions, um, you can always uh, email us, and um, probably the, our email address will be shared uh, later on, right? Okay, so. Uh, this is our campus looks like. Uh, the main campus is called Hakusan. It's in the cent center of Tokyo. Actually, uh, the University of Tokyo's campus is pretty close uh, to us. It's about 15 minute walk from here, right? You know where Japan is, of course. And probably you know where Tokyo is exactly. And see, uh, as I said, one K, one little K makes the big difference, right? So as you might be imagining, uh, well, Tokyo is the capital of Japan. Uh, it's very international, exciting. Uh, well, basically a good place to study in, right? And uh, Tokyo University has five different campuses in and around Tokyo area. The main campus, Hakusan, is at the very center of Tokyo. And in suburb areas, uh, we have four other campuses. So again, this is the main uh, the, the picture from the main campus. Again, the main campus. Well, it's, it's not 100% concrete and buildings. Uh, we have some trees, green. Um, you can you know, enjoy having lunch with your friends under the trees. Well, yeah, it's it's a very cozy, uh, quiet area. And this is what the main campus looks like from, from above, right? You, you see some trees and greens here, but the outside the campus, it's almost 100% concrete and the buildings. Well, Toyo was established, founded in 1887, which is uh, more than 130 years ago. So it's one of the uh, oldest private universities in Japan, right? And in undergraduate programs, we have 13 faculties. Well, faculties means basically school. So we have School of Business, School of Economics, School of uh, Engineering. So we are a comprehensive university, uh, which misses medical school and art school, right? So if you want to be a medical doctor or if you want to be non-artist, you know, want to study about like sculpture, drawings, that kind of things, uh, Toyo may not be a good fit. Other than that, we mostly cover, you know, major academic subjects. So the student population is uh, more than 31,000, uh, which makes our, University, you know, one of the largest um, private universities in Tokyo. I mean, in, in Japan. I mean, and I said uh, three hundred. I mean, three hundred more student clubs, and this includes some sports clubs, uh, which have uh, Olympic athletes, I mean, Olympians, or sometimes um, medalists, Olympic medalists, are there as well. You know, uh, the Japanese traditional sumo, uh, we have a very good uh, sumo club here. So going to the academics, um, this is a list of uh, undergraduate programs. I won't in, be in explaining everything. It will 
would take seven hours probably to cover everything. So, well, I just want you to understand that uh, we are a comprehensive university and we cover most of the subjects, right? And well, in correspondence to the undergraduate programs, uh, we have graduate programs as well. So if there is a program in, for example, Japanese literature in undergraduate, then uh, there is one uh, in graduate program as well. So uh, in 20, uh, I mean, 2014, about uh, six years ago, uh, Toyo was selected as one of the top global universities in Japan. So uh, what it, this is all about is uh, we have been receiving some national grants to promote uh, internationalization and globalization of the university and uh, of the higher education in Japan in general. Right, so we are very keen on you know recruiting international uh, outstanding international um, international students from different countries. Well, that was the uh, introduction of our academic programs, but uh, from here, I just want you to uh, think about some concerns uh, when you think about study abroad. Well, uh, some of you have already been in Japan, but you know, living in Japan and studying in the Japanese university is totally different from just you know, visiting, traveling in Japan. So uh, when you consider studying abroad, not just, not just Japan, but in, in any country, well, these are maybe probably the three major concerns uh, you can come up with, right? L. I mean, I just want to make sure I'm not talking about the, you know, L size or M size of uh, McDonald's French fries, but uh, each of them have uh, has, has some meanings, right? L stands for language. Well, when you come to Japanese university with no Japanese skills, that will be very hard, right? Very very hard. And some of you uh, may be very fluent already, but some of you not. So. Um, language can be a very big barrier. M stands for money. Well, this is everybody's concern, not just for students, but for me, for you, for my you know, parents, everyone. S stands for safety. You know, nobody wants to study in, uh, in a, in a um, dangerous place. And, you know, so if you can't focus on your study, that's no good. So, uh, safety is a very uh, major issue. So uh, we want to post, pose uh, our response to each of the concerns. Well, let's start with S, safety. Well, luckily, and I'm very proud as a Japanese citizen that uh, Tokyo was selected as number one safest city in the world, according to the Safe City Index 2019. I have to say according to, right? Um, in general, I'm not, I was, I'm not from uh, Tokyo, but uh, in general, um, well, Tokyo is a safe place to live in, right? Of course, it's not 100% safe. You have to choose where to go, at what timing, when, with who, right? But in general, um, Tokyo can be a relatively safe place to live. So uh, you can be reassured that uh, if you come to Tokyo, well, uh, you should be okay if you know how to, you know, uh, select where to go and when, right? So that was a response to S. Now, L. Uh, as I said, uh, we have 13 uh, undergraduate programs, faculties with 46 departments and also 18 graduate schools. Um, among them, uh, we have three English medium programs in undergraduate level and nine uh, postgraduate uh, program uh, in English medium programs. So um, at the time of your application, uh, you don't have to have any Japanese skills. Well, you can come here, you can be admitted with only the English proficiency. And um, well, 
theoretically, uh, you don't ha you don't have to learn any Japanese at all until you graduate. You can you can do every you can finish everything in English, right? So, um, well, for the details, you can visit a website. You can just say Toyo uh, English Track Programs. Probably, if you Google it, um, you'll find a lot of information. But uh, you know, you you come to Japan, you live in Japan. Um, you, well, you should be able to learn some, you know, at least some basic Japanese language. So uh, we always recommend international students uh, in these programs to learn some Japanese, take some Japanese classes, and you know, learn Japanese. Right. Uh, that was some uh, response to L. And lastly, M. Money. Well, everybody's concerned. Um, this is the uh, uh, annual tuition fees for uh, ordinary, you know, student in uh, in Tokyo, uh, Toyo, Toyo University. So one point million Japanese yen, which is about, as you see, uh, it's not cheap. Actually, it's very expensive, right? Um, you you can buy a decent car uh, here in uh, in Japan, right? Uh, it's always a burden for any students, especially international students. And also, sorry, I have to tell you, um, living in Tokyo can be very expensive, as you can imagine, right? Um, you know, you have to pay for your food, rent. Well, re housing is very uh, tricky because um, it's always uh, expensive. And also, uh, we are expecting now the Tokyo Olympics uh, next year, and rent tend to, you know, stay uh, very expensive uh, despite this uh, coronavirus situations. So um, now it might be a, a very uh, difficult time for, especially for students, right? So uh, to to reduce your financial burden. Um, Toyo is a program called Partial Tuition Waiver. So um, the tuition, 30% uh, of the tuition fee will, will be deducted. The condition is uh, you, you, sorry, you, you have to be international students. So all international students without um, any expression, expressions, right? Uh, as long as you have a student visa and you're, you're attending classes okay, um, your tuition fees will, will be deducted to 30% for the first year, right? Sorry, it's not 100%, but 30% uh, should be a very you know, large portion. And from the second year and ahead, uh, it will be 20 to 40% depending on your GPA. Right, but still, um, you can get something as long as you have a student visa and attend classes. Okay, so uh, this kind of differentiates uh, in terms of our financial aids from other universities. Well, some universities offer you know this kind of tuition waiver uh, to only a part of the uh, international students. But traditionally, uh, Toyo University is treating international students as very um, um, great asset for our university who bring um, diversity and uh, stimulations for everybody. So uh, we can emphasize this uh, financial ace for international students. So 24 to 40% and to all international students, right? Unfortunately, uh, we, we had 100% uh, scholarship until this year, until this year. But uh, it has been terminated after uh, the next April 2021 admissions and admission period is already over, right? Uh, so uh, we still, uh, have been discussing the possibility of creating a new scholarship programs for international students, but uh, this is what we have right now. Okay, but you know, at least thirty percent should be a very um, big help uh, 
for most of the students. Okay. So uh, I, I hope we have responded to each of the, the major concerns that you may have uh, when you think about study abroad. Okay. Uh, just to mention that uh, Toyo University had 98.5% of employment rate um, last year. Uh, this means that, well, almost all students who are looking for a job got a job. Okay, But uh, it doesn't mean that everybody, uh, those students got a job that they wanted. You know, so it's, it's a kind of tricky number. But um, what you, I just want to say, you know, it's, you, you don't really have to um, worry about the employment opportunities. Well, lastly, uh, just you know, briefly, uh, I'll tell you admissions information, but uh, the details are posted on our website, okay? So uh, basically, Toyo University accepts students in April and September admission. So uh, you can start from April or in September. Uh, if you're looking for undergraduate programs, uh, we only have uh, April admissions only, right? And if you're already in Japan, which may be, may be not your case, uh, if you're already in Japan, and for example, if you're studying at a Japanese language school, um, you, can, you, you should be eligible for entrance exam within Japan, right? Uh, you, you have to have uh, some Japanese skills to apply for this one, right? But this may not be the case for most of you guys here today. Um, another one is called pre-arrival entrance exam, uh, which is about, uh, which is for students who are residing outside Japan. So probably most, most of you guys uh, will fit, fit to this, right? Uh, there will be document screening plus online interview. So you don't have to come to Japan to take the test, right? And well, unfortunately, the application uh, is now closed for April to, to uh, uh, next year, right? Um, actually, uh, we have been discussing the possibility of implementing um, September 2021 20, uh, application admission. So, uh, if there is any changes in our policy, uh, we will post the information on our website. So uh, if you're interested in undergraduate program and coming to Toyo uh, starting in September next year, uh, please uh, keep an eye on our website, right? Uh, Postgraduates, um, we have April and September admission here. So uh, again, the same, uh, we have entrance exam within Japan. So this is for, uh, for students who are already in Japan and who have um, some Japanese skills. And also uh, for, uh, there is a pre-arrival entrance exam. Uh, this is only for September admission, okay? Um, I, I wish I could explain everything in detail, but uh, you know, there's just so much information here. And I, I, you know, there's no way that you know, you, you can remember everything. So and, um, I will just skip. You, you can you know, find a lot of information on the website. So uh, this is our tuition fees for the first year um, and before 30% reduction. So I hope you can get some ideas about you know, how much it will be for, um, I think this is kind of average um, stat, you know, range for a private university in Japan. So second year and beyond. This is what you have to pay, right? Well, if you have any questions or, I mean, if, if you want more uh, further information, um, please, as I said, uh, come to our website, right? Or uh, if you're specifically looking for admissions information uh, for undergraduate programs, uh, you can type in Toyo web style in Google, and then uh, it will lead you to the admissions um, website, okay? Uh, probably the quickest way is to email us at uh, mlglobal 
at toyo.jp. This is my email address. Um, our staff will also uh, share this uh, uh, email address. So uh, you, you, you can email us and I, I, uh, we can uh, forward your message to in the relevant office, right? Okay, uh, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, I hope I didn't use up uh, all 20 minutes here. Uh, okay. yes. Thank you, Mr. Hori, for sharing okay, thank you very much. a nice presentation with the students. I would like to share one interesting piece of information with the students that there are some notable uh, Olympic gold medalists, novelists, and actor alumni of Toyo University. Uh, showcasing the strong co-curricular atmosphere in the student community in the Toyo University. Mm. Yeah. So I will now start the Q&A session with uh, Mr. Hori. And sure. I yeah. request you to kindly see the Q&A portal. I will just read out the questions. Some interesting questions are there for you. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the scope uh, for computer application degree? Uh, and what are the job profiles after graduation? All right, uh, we have two different computer programs, uh, both in undergraduate and um, graduate school. Uh, one is called the Information Networking for uh, Innovation and Design. Uh, this focuses on more you know, application study of um, you know, uh, existing computer uh, knowledge. So if you guys are interested in like uh, AI, uh, app de development, you know, big data, uh, you should consider that program. And also uh, there is another one called uh, information science and arts. Uh, this is kind of, you know, class classic, um, I shouldn't say traditional, but more like computer science, science mm. uh, program, right? Uh, there's a question from Ms. Nethni regarding, uh, can we apply in April for undergraduate programs? Uh, yes. Uh, we only accept students in April so far for undergraduate. Okay, but I think April 21, 21 session is uh, almost over. Yes. So they can Fortunate. apply for April 2022. That's right, yeah. Okay. And uh, are there undergraduate uh, English biology programs in Toyo University? There's a question from uh, Jyotsna. All right. Uh, unfortunately, we do not have a biology program in English. Uh, in undergraduate level. There is one in graduate level though. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there is a question regarding graduate research on organic electronics. Are there any professors who are working uh, in this research field? There's a question from uh, Deepro Banerjee. Okay. Um, we... Organic electronics. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do not have uh, specifically this a program, I mean, a program specialized in this uh, field, but uh, there may be a professor or professors who are doing research on this field. So um, I, I advise you to, you know, come to our, our website and there is a list of professors and that will show, you know, what kind of research they are doing. So um, you can just browse the list of professors. Um, that's what I recommend. And I also request Mr. Deepro to uh, kindly contact Mr. Hori. He has shared his email ID and I have also shared some of the details of the Toyo University in the chat box. And I request Mr. Hori to share his email ID in the chat box later on with the attendees also, so okay. that they can email you directly sure, regarding sure. any yeah. questions. Yeah. And uh, there is a question regarding uh, Nuclear Institute for Agriculture and Biology. Uh, I think he's a degree in uh, uh, Agriculture and Biology. So uh, uh, are there any restrictions for the students to apply to Toyo University who are connected to nuclear institutes? Uh, we, we do not have that kind of uh, program or institute, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, uh, Ms., uh, 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 the Jab San has uh, done uh, uh, agriculture and biology related courses from nuclear institute. So he is basically from agriculture and biology field. So can he apply to your university? Is there any restriction? Well, uh, well, there, there is no restriction. Uh, as okay. long as you have a, you know, a degree, mm. um, you, you, you can apply, you, you will, should be eligible. Okay. Yeah, but uh, you know, whether you will be accepted or not, that, that will be another story. Yes. So 
uh, there is a question regarding the job prospects i think you have covered most of the job prospect aspect in the employment opportunities that are available post graduation in your university would you like to answer this what are the job prospects after completing masters in biological science pharmaceutical science mm, well uh, it's 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 difficult to say because um, you know many companies now are trying to hire uh, international graduate students uh, to their uh, you know to to promote their uh, international global uh, competitiveness so um, it, I I have to say it depends well but the tendency is is now uh, for uh, for you guys right it's it's not easy to get a job though uh, you, you, you know you have to be uh, strategic about uh, you know how to um, apply how 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 to you know spend your um, years at uh, to, uh, university, but yeah, it's not impossible. Uh, there is a question from uh, Mr. Aditya regarding: uh, Is JLPT level of N two sufficient for Japanese courses in the university, or N one is recommended for Japanese courses? Okay, yeah, N one. I mean, N two is a minimal requirement. N two. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's the requirement uh, at the time of your application. Mm -hmm. um, I, I personally recommend you to have N1. Okay. Yeah. yeah th uh, there are many students who are struggling with N2, so. Okay. Uh, there's a confirmation from uh, Nathmi regarding if uh, she applies, then uh, she will be reaching in 2022, right? In April 2022, if she applies now. Uh, if you're looking for undergraduate, yeah, you, undergraduate. Yeah, you have you have to wait until uh, 2020. Okay. 22. Uh, I don't know what is. Uh, can you answer this question? Can I change my university from India to Japan for the same course? Uh, I I think she he or she is talking about the transferring. Yes. Yes, we we do uh, accept international transfer. Um, well, yeah. Yes. So okay. details, you, you can find the information on our website. Okay, I think uh, most of the questions have been covered. Uh, thank you, Mr. Hori, for such a nice presentation and Q&A session with the students. Yeah, thank you very much. It was thank fun. You. Uh, yeah, thank you. Okay, thank so you, everyone. So I will just share the screen and show where are we currently. So we have almost finished the session today. Uh, thank you, everyone, uh, for uh, being here. It was a wonderful opportunity, wonderful opportunity for the young minds to interact with academia and uh, industry professionals uh, to understand the study and work environment in Japan. And uh, I must tell you that uh, Japan is having the one of the best opportunities for learning as well as simultaneously earning through part-time opportunities also, which are the best uh, globally. And many students have come here and made it their home and settled with their families also in Japan. And uh, I must tell you that uh, 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 this is an ongoing seminar session and uh, there are further sessions coming in December, uh, December 9 and December 11. So see you. Uh, thank you very much for joining. I will just stop the share. Okay, thank you everyone.